Parkinson's disease, dementia, I'm going to look specifically at the pharmacological management of this syndrome. We're going to look at uh, the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease, dementia, uh, with a focus on the neurotransmitters important in this disease. The drugs I want to investigate are Aricept, Exelon, Seroquel, Clozaril, Nuplazid, and Melatonin. Parkinson's disease affects upwards of 2 million people in the U.S. Uh, the average age of onset is around 60 years old. Uh, it favors, if you will, uh, men over women. Uh, genetics is a key predisposer, as are um, exposure to pesticides, herbicides, and heavy metals. Agent Orange is strongly implicated in causing Parkinson's disease. Of course, it was used in the Vietnam War as an herbicide. Veterans Administration has done a lot of research on this topic. Head injury is another predisposer. Traumatic brain injury, again, unfortunately, the VA has a lot of data on this. We also see viruses as a possible risk factor. Um, Michael J. Fox was in a cluster of people who had early onset Parkinson's disease, and it's postulated that maybe they all had a virus in common that they caught. Um, Early signs of Parkinson's, it starts with this rest, restless leg syndrome. We see REM sleep disturbance, a loss of smell, and constipation. These symptoms can appear decades before the classic Parkinson's symptoms, which are uh, these four, shaking, stiffness, slow movement, problems with balance and coordination. These are late signs of something that was taking years uh, to, uh, to manifest. Here's the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease briefly. It starts with the destruction of the dopamine-producing cells in the uh, substantia nigra, which is in the basal ganglia of the brain. As uh, dopamine stores are depleted, um, there's a degeneration of the pathway, the dopaminergic pathway in the brain, uh, resulting in um, impairment of the extrapyramidal uh, tracts, which control body movements uh, such as and you get these symptoms, tremor, tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia, and postural changes. Uh, here's the uh, pathway in the brain that's affected. You see the substantia nigra there in the basal ganglia and then this dopaminergic pathway. The, de the dementia, which we'll call PDD, uh, begins with Parkinson's disease symptoms, uh, which can be present for many years before the dementia. It's characterized, unlike other, uh, like al unlike Alzheimer's, by fluctuations. So there are good days and bad days. On autopsy, we find something called Lewy bodies, which I'll describe in a moment. The symptoms of PDD are many, but they include impaired memory in a kind of uh, different way than Alzheimer's. The person still recognizes people, uh, places they've been to, but they have trouble retrieving their memories. Um, they have executive dysfunction. They can't follow instructions. Attention is impairment. Uh, visual spatial deficit issues. Uh, put one of these patients in a crowded room with a lot of furniture, and they'll have trouble navigating their way out of that maze. It's not unusual to have changes in personality. Um, more paranoid, uh, delusional, um, ang anxious, depressed, and even obsessive compulsive symptoms. So Lewy bodies are the hallmark of PDD. Uh, they're a cellular collection of uh, alpha synuclein and ubiquitin proteins, which are the uh, debris from the degradation of the dopaminergic cells. Um, so I like to think of them as big black trash bags in the brain, uh, collecting these proteins as the brain's trying to tidy up. But eventually, uh, they become an impediment to uh, neurotransmission, kind of like in a hoarder's house with a lot of stuff stacked around. Uh, so on autopsy, we'll see these mostly near the olfactory bulb in the basal ganglia. You know, you remember smell is this very primitive um, basal uh, ganglia sense we have. Um, it's the last sense to go when we die, they say. Um, so um, it does... Um, respond so much, to, uh, somewhat to cholinase inhibitors, uh, the Lewy body diseases, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, hallucinations in PDD 
are interesting. Um, they're a home, they're a part of this disease process. Uh, many patients don't tell caretakers, healthcare uh, providers that they're hallucinating. They know they're hallucinating. They know it's part of the disease. Um, and sometimes these are just minor uh, hallucinations. They'll see a raccoon run across the floor or something uh, like that. Um, they tend to fall in three major categories, children, animals, and objects, and sometimes have a tactile. Uh, they can feel the, like the fur on the cat they're hallucinating about. Uh, the pathophysiology of PDD is an extension of what's happening with Parkinson's disease where we have this disruption of dopamine and acetylcholine balance in the basal ganglia. Uh, and I do want to point out that this disease is very different than Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is characterized by plaques and tangles in the um, brain, beta amyloid plaques and tangles, and really doesn't have much uh, to do with, uh, has nothing to do with dopamine um, production. Neurotransmitters are key to understanding PDD. Uh, the dopamine acetylcholine balance is what all these drugs are about. A person needs dopamine for voluntary movement, balance, coordination. Uh, we think of it as the amplifier of motor activity. Um, but it's also necessary for higher level thinking, such as uh, decision making. Too much dopamine, though, is linked to psychosis and hallucination. Acetylcholine. Um, can be thought of as the modulator in neurotransmission. It affects actually both the parasympathetic and the central nervous system. So it kind of turns down uh, motor activity, if you will. These are very simplified uh, descriptions. Um, and so it's also used in the peripheral nervous system uh, for messaging. So you see that uh, exaggerated uh, tremulous shaking in the Parkinson's patient. So these have to be in balance. Uh, acetylcholine, a little more about that. Um, it's uh, the neuromodulator for controlling memory, excitability, arousal. Uh, cholinesterase is the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine. So we have drugs called cholinesterase inhibitors that inhibit, inhibit the breakdown of ACH, acetylcholine. So this is thought to help with memory, um, concentration, um, these dementia things that happen. Uh, so it's a first choice in treating both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease dementia. But in the Parkinson's patient, too much acetylcholine is going to cause these exaggerated spasms and jerky motions. So treating uh, Parkinson's disease dementia, we start with the cholinesterase inhibitors. Uh, the two that are used are Aricept and Exelon. Um, and we stay away from anticholinergics. And of course, there's so many of them, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, antiemetics, antihistamines, antipsychotics. Um, there are a lot of treatment dilemmas with Parkinson's disease dementia. Uh, dopamine, um, which Parkinson's disease patients need, can worsen their psychotic symptoms. Um, the neuroleptics, um, both actually antipsychotics and atypicals, the Parkinson's patient is hypersensitive to, and can, these can actually worsen uh, their cognitive function and motor ability. So uh, in treating the PDD patient, you want to avoid all antipsychotics, Haldol, Risperidol, Zyprexa, uh, Abilify. These can block dopamine. Instead, we do use atypicals, uh, Seroquel, and Clozaril. So to treat the pure dementia symptoms, uh, the patient started on uh, cholinesterase inhibitors. Aricept is um, the most common um, we see mild to moderate benefit early on with this drug. Uh, side effects include nausea, trouble sleeping, depression. But the risk is that you're increasing the Parkinson symptoms, the classic ones I talked about with this drug. And at a certain point in the progression of the dementia, the uh, cholinesterase inhibitors are discontinued because they are uh, causing such an exaggeration of the Parkinson symptoms. So the recommendation is to use them uh, until the side effects are intolerable. Uh, Aricept um, interacts badly with Welbutrin, Omnipake, Ultram, and other drugs in these classes with an increased risk of seizure, seizures. Exelon is the other cholinase, cholinesterase inhibitor that's commonly used. Uh, one of the main benefits of this drug is it does come in a patch form, which uh, 
lessen some of the GI side effects since it's not being um, sent to the stomach. Um, and it also is thought to decrease hallucinations in some patients. Uh, again, same drug interactions uh, with the caveat that you should really watch out with cardiac drugs because of uh, potentials for bradycardia, AV block, hypotension. Uh, don't use with Reglan other drugs in that class because of the risk for uh, EPS and uh, symptoms. Um, so how do you treat psychosis, frank psychosis? Uh, you want to reduce the dopaminergic meds the patient's taking uh, and look at the contributory meds that they might be on, the anticholinergics. Um, did somebody put them on Reglan? Are, um, the benzos, rule out metabolic causes. Uh, if the patient's really at a danger of harming themselves or others, then you do need to reach for something um, like Seroquel or Clozapine. Uh, those are the preferred choices. Seroquel is usually the best tolerated. Um, but as a class, these drugs are associated um, with antipsychotics and atypicals with death in the PDD patient. Um, Seroquel is general, generally well tolerated, but can cause a worsening of motor symptoms. The usual side effects, constipation, weakness, dizziness, uh, dry mouth, caution. There are many drugs that it interacts with. Uh, for example, amiodarone can cause QT prolongation. Uh, when the person starts to become a little less psychotic, there's a risk for increased suicidal ideation. They're more aware of their situation, I think, and an, an increased risk of death for the elderly. Uh, Clozaril, the other atypical that's used, is a really dirty drug. Uh, it's known for causing agranulocytosis, so weekly blood counts are required to monitor for neutropenia. It can cause myocarditis. It lowers the patient's seizure threshold and carries a black box warning for sudden cardiac death. Uh, side effects include hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia, potential for pulmonary embolism, urinary incontinence, constipation, sedation, and the increased DPS symptoms. Uh, it also reacts badly with many drugs. Here's a list of them. Um, QT prolongation, serotonin syndrome, um, low blood pressure, sudden cardiac arrest. You have to be very careful. Um, the new drug that's out is Nuplazid. It was just released this summer, a couple a month ago, I think. Um, it's approved for uh, Parkinson's disease, dementia, psychosis. It's billed as the first antipsychotic specifically for a neurological disease. It's working on um, a different uh, receptor site. It's called a non-dopaminergic atypical antipsychotic. So this 5-HT2A receptor is the uh, same receptor site that's targeted by LSD. So something to do with hallucinations, right? Um, it's not associated with the worsening of motor symptoms um, because it's non-dopaminergic. Um, however, the long-term safety and efficacy is not really established. The phase three clinical trial um, had 199 patients and was run for six weeks. So we don't have a lot of data on this drug, but it's believed that it has a lower side effect profile. Uh, it does uh, interact poorly with um, clarithromycin and other drug, other antibiotics in that class with a risk of QT prolongation. Um, watch out with Haldol, Amiodarone, Geodon. Uh, so in general, treating delirium versus psychosis in the PDD patient, you want to um, try using levodopa only. Uh, of course, rule out uh, causes, uh, obtain labs, look for uh, infections such as a UTI. Uh, look at adding the cholinesterase inhibitor, which we talked about. Uh, you can try the atypical um, psychotics, as we discussed, uh, but be careful for over-sedation, and consider this new drug, um, pimavinserin. Uh, caution, do not use Nemenda. Um, it's beneficial to Alzheimer's patients, um, but can worsen hallucinations in the PDD patient. Melatonin is another um, drug I want to talk about. Of course, it's available over the counter in... Um, but um, it's used with PDD patients um, for helping with sleep disorders. Um, 
since it's believed that the disease process begins in the substantia nigra, which is also where melatonin is produced, um, is seen as uh, supplementation is seen as helpful in regulating the sleep-wake cycle. Uh, and there's some good studies showing this. Here's a table, uh, a flow chart showing the pathway that it's believed uh, melatonin follows, and perhaps it's postulated it could even slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. In conclusion, uh, treating Parkinson's disease dementia is a delicate balancing act between uh, dopamine and acetylcholine. Here's some websites for more information on Parkinson's disease. They're in the slide deck, and here are a ton of references.